Recent studies have shown that children as small as 3 years old find dogs cute. As for adults, we don't need science to tell us that most of them absolutely adore puppers. We've been on the internet long enough. But was man's best friend originally domesticated to be a cutesy companion? Well, not really. When dogs were first domesticated some 30,000 odd years ago, their purpose was to protect and to aid in a hunt. Today, there are only a handful of breeds that can do that. That is, ward off or outright kill wild animals. What might these breeds be? Let's find out on today's lineup of dog breeds that are nightmares to wild animals. Number 10. The Plot Hound don't let this dog's appearance fool you into thinking he's cuddly. Descended from both foxhounds and German dogs that were expert wild boar hunters, the plot hound is anything but. As a matter of fact, it can give chase to everything from raccoons and wild boars to black bears and mountain lions. How, you ask? Well, as we explained before, it's because of its German ancestors. While the plot hound was officially adopted as North Carolina State Dog in 1989, it's been in the US of A for some 250 50 years now. The story goes that the son of a German gamekeeper, George formerly Johannes, Blot first arrived on American soil with their predecessors in the 1750s. Yes, you guessed it, that's where the breed gets its name from. Anywho, by the 1800s, George, formerly Johannes, Blot's son, Henry Plot, had become somewhat of a rich landowner in western North Carolina. It was on his 1700 acres worth of land that the breed became what it is today. The long and short of it is that Henry and his successors bred plots to be both fearless and smart. Fearless enough to hunt bears and smart enough to not get killed. As a result, this breed led hundreds of visiting sportsmen on bear hunts and as a consequence was popularized outside North Carolina as well. And from what we know, their popularity hadn't dwindled over the years. They're still popular with hunters, especially for their baying, which apart from their tenacity, easily helps them corner a bear and then announce its location. Whew, we wish our German ancestries had done such wonders for us, alas. Number 9. The Rhodesian Ridgeback Although they've become couch potatoes over the years, at one point in time Rhodesian Ridgebacks were famed for surviving encounters with a number of African predators, including lions. Now the story of their breeding is a bit complicated. As far as we know, a bunch of Dutch colonists had something to do with it. Simply, some of the continental breeds that they took with them to South Africa crossbred with the ones owned by the native Khoikhoi Koi tribe. The Khoikhoi Koi bred had unique backwards growing stripes of the hair up its back. A ridge, so to speak. Yes, that's where the ridgeback part of its name came from. As for Rhodesian, we'll come to that in a minute. Now, about 200 years after the crossbreeding happened, a reverend by the name of Charles Helm arrived in the southwest corner of Rhodesia, present-day Zimbabwe. He was accompanied by two of his ridgeback dogs, and his family as well, of course. Sorry, let's get back to the point. Now, when he and his family would go away on business, they'd lead these dogs of a hunter called Cornelius Van Ruyen. The trouble was that as a big game hunter, Van Ruyen had a pack of lion hunting dogs. Do you see where this is going? Yep, the Ridgebacks crossbred with the dogs from the said pack. The rest? Well, let's just say the breed became famous for hunting a bunch of wild animals. Lions, antelopes, or baboons. You name them. The Rhodesians could hunt them. Emphasis on could. Because even though they've retained some of their tendencies and their characteristic ridges, they're no longer used for hunting lions. The fact that it has been outlawed might have something to do with it. We still have faith in their ferocity. Number 8. The Carolean Bear Dog as its name indicates, the Carolean is known for tracking and treeing bears, but that's not all it's capable of. Given the chance, this Finnish breed can successfully take on moose as well. If you're wondering how, it usually does with its bark or by nipping the creature in their heels. Because of this ability to keep wild animals in check, Caroleans have been declared a national treasure in Finland. Which is kind of funny if you ask us, you know, since they were first bred for hunting purposes in parts of Karelia, which is modern-day Russia. Number 7. The Louisiana Catahoula Leopard Dog 
You've already met the state dog of North Carolina. Now it's time for you to meet Louisiana's. We're talking about none other than the Louisiana Catahoula Leopard Dog. Although it was named after a parish, expecting kindness out of this breed means barking up the wrong tree. Not only are Catahoulas excellent bird hunters, but they're also fully capable of taking on bigger game like deers, bears, and mountain lions. Now when it comes to birds, they rely on their excellent sense of smell to point their locations out. When we say birds, we don't only mean the ones trees. Unlike Rhodesians who will outright refuse to jump into water because of their African origins, Catahoulas are excellent swimmers. For this reason, they're used for hunting ducks as well. An amazing thing about this breed is that it sneaks up on a wild animal really silently. So silently, in fact, that the prey has no time to react. But that's not all. Another thing that makes these dogs awesome is their usefulness to search and rescue missions. As we've already explained, this is owing to their acute sense of smell. Number 6. The American Pitbull Terrier One of the most often quoted examples of a catch dog is an American Pitbull Terrier. And why wouldn't it be? It's a descendant of the Greek Mastiff-type dogs, the kinds who were commonly found in fighting arenas throughout the Roman Empire. But get this, their fighting careers didn't end with the decline of the Roman Empire, no sir. Until a few centuries ago, and before such sports were outlawed, they were used in both bear and bull baiting. Simply put, they were pitted against these animals in a fight. Although we're no historians, they were chosen for these games because of their former roles as butchers and hunters' assistants. Confused? Hear us out. Before they became fighting dogs, they used to aid butchers in managing bulls. As for hunters, they'd use them to both catch and hold wild boars. Today, they're still favored as hunting slash catch dogs because they've retained their instinct to fight. However, they'll require a little to bring these traits out. Number 5. The English Springer Spaniel Much like the Catahoula, the English Springer Spaniel is an excellent bird dog. As a matter of fact, the Springer part of its name originates from its ability to flush or spring game birds, especially pheasants. The Spaniel part, on the other hand, is believed to stem from its Spanish origins. Now we know what you're thinking. If it's Spanish, why is it called the English Springer Spaniel? Well, for the same reason that cockroaches are called cockroaches, that's just how languages work. Either that, or that it was brought to the English Isles by the Spanish. Regardless of his background, Old English stories refer to a dog called Spaniel. Apparently, this dog was excellent at flushing out game birds. So safe to say the ESS's amazing abilities are nothing new. Going by the historical records, they've been at the top of the bird game for a millennia before the Flint Rock was discovered. No, we're not making any of this up. Number 4. The Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever While all retrievers are good at hunting ducks, the Nova Scotia variety is famed for its unique hunting technique. What might that be? Well, it's all in its name. To elaborate, these breeds use a trick called tolling to attract them. Before we can explain what tolling is, we'd like to tell you a little choice tidbit about ducks. That is, they're really curious creatures, and the Nova Scotia Retrievers use this exact trait to their advantage by prancing on the shorelines of all things. Yes, you heard that right. The dogs will perform a little shoreline dance to attract the duck's attention. Once they come close to inspect, the hunter will shoot them, at which point the dog, being a retriever, will simply retrieve the fallen bird. Not a day goes by that nature doesn't surprise us. Number 3. The Great Dane In a fashion similar to the plot ancestors, Danes were also bred to hunt boars. By the German nobility of all people, today they're bred as both therapy and police dogs. Are they still used for hunting? Not really. This is because with time, their hunting instincts, the ones that they got from the Irish wolfhounds, greyhounds, and English mastiffs, were bred out. Nonetheless, they seem to have retained their protectiveness. As a result, they're still good at chasing off burglars. Number 2. The Kangol Shepherd If there's one dog we'd never mistake for a cuddler, it's the Kangol Shepherd. 
Just the size of this thing is enough to convince us of its abilities as a hunter, which it is as a descendant of the powerful Mesopotamian hunting dogs. As for which wild animals would think twice before straying near it, well cheetahs, tigers, wolves, and bears, to name a few. Fun fact, these dogs predate, yes predate, on the Nami B and cheetahs. For this reason, and perhaps their size, they've been dubbed as Anatolian lions. That's not all, wolves are said to sprint at the mere sight of them. Wolves aren't special, we do it too. Number 1. The Tibetan Mastiff Before it became a status symbol in China, this Central Asian breed was bred by Tibetan nomads to protect both livestock and monasteries. Against what, you say? Well, against a range of animals like wolves, leopards, tigers, etc. However, let's be honest. These sentinel dogs would require a companion to kill these beasts off. On their own, all they could do was ward them off. Which, if you ask us, is good enough. Alright, comment down below what you want to see next. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Wildly for more. See you in the next one.